Hello and welcome to Mission Wilderness. As always, I'm Shane and my mission is to bring you deeper into the wilderness with trip videos, educational content, and gear reviews. This video brings us to Clearwater Lake in the 1.1 million acre Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. The plan is to base camp on Clearwater Lake and to accomplish two missions. The first mission is to take the two mile portage from Rove Lake to Rose Lake. The second mission is to visit Rose Falls on Rose Lake. It's 6.23, we've been on the water for about a half an hour. I'd say we are about uh, three quarters to maybe even four fifths the way to the campsite where I intend on camping and setting up the base camp for these two missions over the course of these next uh, two nights and really two days, really mostly just one day. Done. I've cleaned up. I uh, put the food bag away. It's a, probably about 75 feet away from the camp. It's tied to a tree. It's in a Kevlar bag. There is a bear running about. Apparently there's a nuisance bear on Caribou and Moon that has been running away with campers food. And they've had reports within the last three days so they think the bear might make it here to Clearwater. I'm carrying a, an earth sack. It's a Kevlar bag and uh, it's tied to a tree side with the figure eight knot so if anything tries to pull it off of there that knot's just going to get tighter and theoretically that Kevlar will not rip so my food should be safe from bears in addition I also have it in a smell proof bag too. The missions tomorrow are substantial and it should be warm too it's going to be a hot day. I'll have to drink a lot of water I probably have about a half a mile to paddle uh, up clear water. Then I've got about a 300 rod portage. From the cross border route campsite, there's a, a trail that goes to the cross border route and then the cross border route continues down to Rove Lake. And then once on Rove, then I'll approach the portage trail leading to Rose. That portage trail is over 600 rod long. It's about two miles long. And from what people say, the beginning part, probably first maybe fifth of it at most, the first fifth is a little bit difficult. Kind of like a traditional boundary waters portage, a lot of up, down, roots, rocks, that kind of thing. But then after that, it's an old railroad bed and the old railroad bed follows a creek, which is actually quite pretty. And there's also some old growth forest there. So it doesn't sound like it's a bad walk. Some people did suggest that if the beaver dammed the creek, it could flood the trail. So we may be dealing with flooded trail. 
And then of course on Rose Lake it's another two mile paddle to get to Rose Falls. And, uh, and then we'll look at Rose Falls and we'll examine it for its, its, its structure, its shape, and see if we can't categorize what the structure or shape is within the context of a typology of waterfall structures. But I think that's all for me tonight. The die is cast. The missions are set. We're soloing on Clearwater. This is night one of two. Good morning. Last night there was a very serious rainstorm accompanied by thunder and lightning, but early this morning it was absolutely beautiful. It was relatively cool. There was just enough breeze to keep the mosquitoes away. I did get a little bit worried because I saw some, some building cumulus clouds off to the west that looked a little worrisome, so I went ahead and I checked the weather on my Garmin device. And what the weather showed on my Garmin device is that there's a 10% chance of rain all day long until 8 p.m. And then at 8 p.m. there's a 30% chance of rain. So I feel relatively confident in embarking on this mission. The first big obstacle I have on this mission is there's about a 300 rod portage that's rarely taken from Clearwater to Rove Lake. Well, nobody said it was going to be easy. That was definitely about 300 rod and the trail was infested with mosquitoes. There were lots of spots where it was very bouldery. There was water running down the trail at one point. The rocks were all slippery from last night's rain, which made it more challenging. There were many and many blowdown, probably a good four or five significant blowdown. At one point I had to put the canoe down it's not a used, it's not a well used portage trail, let's just say that. But it served its purpose. It, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to find it on the way back if I choose to go this way back. It is, uh, it's along obviously, it's along the southern shore and there's a large boulder with a almost pencil straight northern white cedar sticking up out of the right of the boulder just behind it. But we're on Rove Lake now. So we're on the US Canadian border, we're on the frontier. This is truly the boundary waters, the boundary between the United States and Canada. And Rove Lake is just gorgeous. 
it's uh, east-west, so it can kick up pretty good, or at least the wind can get pretty mighty in the, as it whistles down this narrow lake. See, this is what I mean right here, is I mean the wind can just whip through on these east-west lakes like this, and it can exaggerate the effect of the wind quite a bit. So I'm at the narrow spot on Rove, and the wind is just kicked up pretty good. It's not serious, you know, it's not gonna blow me over or prevent me from making much progress, but it is a little bit intense and I'm sure. I'm just hiding out on the sweet gale over here on the Canadian side, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about Rove Lake and why Rove Lake is so special. It's got a lot of history. Of course, it's part of the Voyager's trading route. It is also the border between the United States and Canada, or it's on the border between the United States and Canada that was established by the Webster-Ashburn Treaty of 1842. And what that treaty says is that both Americans and Canadians can use this, these waterways freely. Uh, and they can use any portages that are on these waterways as well. And Rove Lake also is significant in the fur trade because there was a Hudson Bay Company trading post here. The Hudson Bay Company was established in 1670. It's still in existence today. The Hudson Bay Company owns Saks Fifth Avenue in New York City and they still own a lot of uh, department stores all over the United States and Canada. But the Hudson Bay Company started off as a, as a fur trading enterprise primarily, and they had a fur trading post here that was established in the late 18th century, late 1700s, early 1800s, early 19th century. And after this part of the North Country was turned over to the United States, after the 1850s, then one of the founding fathers of Grand Marais Henry Mayhew, who is also considered the founding father or the grandfather of the Gunflint Trail, he built a road and improved a road that went from Grand Marais to Rove Lake, where he took over the old Hudson Bay Company fur trading post and uh, established his own fur trading enterprise there as well. And I guess that there was an Indian village on this lake as too, and this lake is just important. There's been a lot of activity on this lake historically. Now, of course, it's part of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness on the southern side, and so that's a preserved and protected wilderness on the southern side. On the northern side, it's in Canada, and it's just crown land. So it's not necessarily preserved and protected wilderness on the north side. Um, we're still a little bit farther, e a little further east than Quatico Provincial Park here. But there's been a lot of roads, you know, as you can imagine, with a, trade, uh, a fur trading post here and an Indian village, there were a lot of roads that were established, and then later, in the late, 19, the late 19th century, the late 1800s, this area was logged as well. And once it was logged, then there were several railroad lines that were put in. You know, they were probably just relatively temporary railroad lines or railroad beds, but there were railroad beds that were put in too. And there are railroad beds crisscrossing this entire area of the Boundary Waters. And there is one that connects Rove Lake to Rose Lake as well which follows the historic fur trading portage between Rove and Rose. But for right now, I'm gonna have a snack, drink some water, put some sunscreen on, then, uh, and then keep on keeping on toward the accomplishment of our missions today. Two paths diverged.
Uh, just completed the 2.2 mile portage from Rove Lake to Rose Lake. There were a lot of people on that portage. I ran into no less than four or five parties. And honestly, I have to tell you that the portage from Rove to Rose was easier than the portage from Clearwater to Rove. It, the trail just could not be better. Even the parts of the cross-border route trail that people said, you know, are kind of rough. It's kind of up, down, a little muddy. No problem. Very open. Yeah, there were some boulders. Yeah, they were a bit slippery. Yeah, there was a little bit of mud. But as far as portage trails go, it was a very good portage trail. And then once you get on the railroad bed, I mean, it is easy peasy. It's beautiful. There, there are boardwalks that go over the muddiest areas, and those boardwalks are in great shape. You go along a creek for much of it, which is very charming. And there's only one spot that there's a significant obstacle, and that is a spot where the beavers have dammed the creek. And in the process of damming the creek, it's flooded the portage trail to the tune of about five or 10 rod. But it's no problem. You, what I did is I just, uh, I just dropped boat, I just put the boat in the water, dropped the paddle, paddled across the five or 10 rod, and it was easy. Uh, no trouble at all. It was a very simple paddle. We have completed mission number one. We are now on mission number two. Mission number two is to go to Rose Falls and to classify it. And there are at least 12 different shapes of waterfalls. The first shape of waterfall is a plunge waterfall. And a plunge waterfall is one in which the water falls straight down and it separates from the rock face. So the water is actually out from the rock face. And oftentimes a plunge waterfall is so powerful that it has eroded the rock face down to create a space behind the waterfall that you could walk behind. And that is a plunge waterfall. A ribbon waterfall is one that is very thin and it's ephemeral, meaning that when things dry out, that waterfall will disappear. And that's a ribbon waterfall. A horsetail waterfall is one in which the water stays connected to the rock face and it spreads out enough to look a little bit like a horsetail. It's generally a pretty steep waterfall. A fan waterfall, on the other hand, like the horsetail waterfall, the water stays connected to the rock face, but it spreads way out and is generally not as steep as a horsetail waterfall. A punch bowl waterfall actually refers to the plunge pool. That is the space in which the water runs into at the bottom of the waterfall. And that's a space where the water has cut out an area that looks like a punch bowl. A block waterfall is what you typically think of when you think of a waterfall. It's Niagara Falls. It's shaped like a rectangle. A tiered waterfall is one in which there are multiple vertical leaps and you can see them all from a single vantage point. And so really it's like multiple waterfalls, each with their own pool that you can see from one single vantage point. A segmented waterfall is one where the water, when running over the cliff face, actually separates out into two distinct streams and could be categorized as like two waterfalls, but it's just one waterfall that is segmented. A cascade waterfall is not very steep. It descends down the rock face and it's very turbulent, and some people might even consider it a rapid. A chute waterfall is one in which a large volume of water is being forced through a small space, like a gorge, and it also includes a drop. A scree waterfall is one in which the water stays connected to the rock face and it's actually not running across a smooth rock face, it's running across a bunch of small rocks. And finally, a slide waterfall is one in which water is running over a flat rock and so it's just sliding down the front of a flat rock. That's a slide waterfall. Today, we're going to Rose Falls and we're gonna classify it according to this scheme of 12 waterfalls. But before we can see Rose Falls, we've got to paddle two miles of Rose Lake, and we are on the windward side of this lake, meaning that we are getting a bit of a breeze and the lake is kicked up a bit. It's not dangerous now, but it wouldn't take much additional wind to kick it up and force us to go into shore. So at this point, I want to move quickly, get us to Rose Falls, and accomplish mission number two.
I'm sure that at this stage I must look quite fright. Perhaps it's better that I'm backlit, huh? Uh, just finished the long portage, 2.2 miles, total 4.4 miles on that portage today. And I'm now on Rove Lake. Thankfully, there's just a nice gentle breeze. It is currently 6.04. I think I should make it back to camp by 8, but I'd really like to be there earlier than that, maybe 7.30 or so, and have enough time to be able to get a bath in, jump in the lake into clear water and get cleaned up and put on a fresh t-shirt, fresh pair of underwear, fresh pair of socks. Supper is a secondary concern at this point. I'll talk more about Rose Falls, but for right now I'm just really focused on getting back to camp at a reasonable time. I have returned to clear water. It's 7.07, I got on the water at about 7, made it to the end of the Portage Trail, and uh, there's that campsite there, that cross-border route trail campsite, and it was occupied. Uh, initially, the first thing I noticed was a big, big white dog that started barking at me, but thankfully there was a, uh, the owner was there and the owner was able to get the dog under control and allow me to get onto the water. So I, uh, I am within sight of my campsite, and uh, at 7.07 .07, I consider that relatively early. That is certainly sooner than I had expected to arrive. I had expected that I wouldn't get here until 8, but it turns out that just by making slow and steady progress I was able to get here. But boy, that last stretch was really tough. I'll give you a full breakdown once I get back on camp, back to camp, and I have an opportunity to get cleaned up and I get comfortable and It's just great to be back here. Um, it was kind of felt kind of sketchy once it was about 4:30, and I was still on Rose Lake at the bottom of Rose Falls, and and it kind of dawned on me that it was going to take a long time to get back, and I might not get back until just before dark. It's currently 8:12, and this is about the time that I thought I would be getting back. So I was happy to be back at the campsite by about 7:15 or 7:20. Now that said, I was not met with a happy situation when I returned to my campsite. Um, apparently a bear has been to my camp and the bear got into my garbage box, got into my bathroom kit, and uh, and then tore out my ursac. It, uh, it's a credit to the ursac that the bear did not get the ursac off of the tree. It's also a credit to the setup that I used with the double knot at the top of the ursac and then the, the uh, figure eight knot uh, around the tree. That figure eight knot was really, really super tight, so the bear had torn at it quite a bit and had pulled at the bag quite a lot, and there were bite marks all over the bag. But um, the bear did not get inside the bag, which is good news. What is bad news is, is that the bear crushed everything that was inside my food pack. So the entire inside of my ursac is just a goo of various kinds of food that are all mixed together. Thankfully this is just the this is the second of my two night trip and that tomorrow I can go back to civilization. And so it's not a serious problem and I did bring an extra amount of food with me today over to Rose Falls just in case I didn't make it back I wanted to have plenty of calories available to me. So I do have enough food to get me by tonight and I have some food for breakfast. I mean, it's not going to be the breakfast I want. It's not, it's not coffee and oatmeal and, uh, you know, I'm not going to have a, a warm supper or a hot supper tonight. 
As for the missions, I'm really happy that they were both accomplished. I visited Rose Falls, and I think I was able to classify what Rose Falls is all about, that there are three distinct types of falls there. There was clearly a plunge waterfall, that's the first and top waterfall, and I could tell that it was a plunge waterfall because it dropped straight down, it separated from the rock face, and it even had eaten away, or it had eroded the rock face a little bit underneath the waterfall so that there was a space behind it that you could crawl into or you could walk back behind it so you could get behind the waterfall. And that's a key characteristic of a plunge waterfall. Uh, the, then then, at the bottom of the plunge waterfall, it kind of morphs into a cascade. It's still a pretty substantial vertical drop, but it looks a little bit more like a rapid at about a 30 degree angle or about a 40 degree angle. And then what happens is, is that uh, the, the water course continues down the slope pretty quickly, and there's a spot which I can only really classify as a chute. It's not really a gorge, but what happens is, is that the water course narrows substantially and then the water rushes right down through that really fast while at the same time dropping, which seems to be the definition of a chute. So Rose Falls, it's really falls and there were three different kinds of falls there. There was a plunge fall, cascade falls, and a chute waterfall. So it was an exhausting day to go all the way there, but well worth it. It was beautiful and uh, I'm looking forward to a, a good night's sleep hopefully undisturbed by a bear, and uh, I certainly do appreciate the fact that you came along with me on these missions. I mean, you were a big part of the reason why I was able to push through, and I was able to see so much of this little corner of the Boundary Waters. I will see you tomorrow morning. Well, good morning, Mission Wilderness friends. It was quite a harrowing night. It rained and thunderstormed all night last night. It was storm after storm after storm. Nevertheless, I got a relatively good night's sleep, and now I'm paddling back to civilization. Let's consider this mission accomplished. Thanks a lot for coming along with me. I really appreciate it. It's great to have you out here with me. If you like this video, you know, please do like it. It really helps the channel. Also, if you like videos like this, then go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video that I upload in the future. Again, thanks for coming on this Mission Wilderness.